Yeah? 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 Demon Slayer is a pretty cool resistance type class that's got some really capable bossing and a fairly simple playstyle. They got major sustain for both their health and resource, Demon Fury, multiple iframes, tons of crit on pretty much all their main skills, and inherently high damage with even low investment if you ever wanted them as a boss mule. Most players that boss regularly will also eventually want to get their Demon Slayers to level 210 for their amazing Link skill, Fury Unleashed, which gives 20% boss damage. As usual, let's start off with all their skills. Beginning in the Beginner tab, Demon Slayer gets two passives. One for 100% knockback resistance and instantly level 20 in the Willpower and Ambition traits, and Dark Winds, which functions as a glide when you hold your jump key down while midair. You can change your glide direction anytime you want. If you jump and double tap left or right, you flash jump in that direction, and double tapping up lets you up jump. If you wanted the more standard flash jump function instead of the glide, just right click the skill to lock it, and clicking jump twice in the air will instead just flash jump, like most other classes with a flash jump. Do be warned however, right clicking to lock dark winds disables the glide function completely. Glide becomes useful later on for bossing, so if you wanted extra positioning tools, keep that in mind. Anyways, first job has a few passives, for more max health, attack speed, strength, and movement speed and jump, and two attacks. This first one, Demon Lash, costs nothing, and replaces your normal attack entirely. Every hit that lands on enemies restores some of your Demon Fury, which is Demon Slayer's equivalent to mana. It mobs, does pretty decent damage, and looks cool. The second one, Grim Scythe, is your first skill that costs Demon Fury. Hold it down, and it spins in front of you for about 4 seconds. No cooldown, just click it again whenever you feel like it. I don't even know why it stops. Second job upgrades your Demon Lash's damage and changes its color from yellow to red. Since you can't revert it, mine's stuck at purple, which you get later on at fourth job. You also get a few more standard passives, and this buff that retaliates against enemies that hurt you, returning damage back to them, and giving a chance to stun them when they do so. There's also three new attacks that cost Fury. Dark Thrust is a standard rush forward skill that warrior type classes usually get. Soul Eater is another hold down skill that damages enemies in front of you, but this time you can hold it down for as long as you want. And Chaos Lock is a teleport with extremely useful functions for both grinding and bossing, going straight to any monster within its range and having a chance to stun them. You can hold any direction, including diagonally, to target a specific mob or group of mobs if you so desire. Its one downside is you can't absorb Fury at all after teleporting for the duration of its cooldown, which is 0.7 seconds. I'll talk more about its other various useful functions later on in the Made Easy section. For now, let's introduce Third Job's handful of passives. Another upgrade and color for Demon Lash, a bunch more defense, attack speed, and damage, extra Fury absorption with Demon Lash, as well as passive Fury regeneration, a guard passive that gives back 3% of your health and 5 fury with every successful guard, and insult to injury, which does more final damage to debuffed enemies, as well as permanently gives a little extra bit of crit rate. As for your fury attacks at this job rank, Ravenstorm is an iframe that also restores health with enemies it hits, 30 second cooldown, Vortex of Doom is a pull-in skill with a chance to stun enemies, Judgment is a ground slam that can only be used on the ground and erupts spikes around you with a higher chance of crit rate, and Carry On Breath is your quirky little hold down skill with, again, no set duration. It also places a damage over time, dot, on enemies hit by it. Apparently it also makes enemies unable to eat lunch for a week afterwards. <laughs> huh? Fourth job starts off with your final upgrade to Demon Thrash, a couple more passives, the ever so prevalent Maple Warrior and Heroes will, and three buffs. The first, Leechora, simply heals you and your party for all your attacks, 5 second cooldown in between heals. The second one, Dark Metamorphosis, gives you extra damage for 3 minutes, as well as 2 shadows spinning around you, and enemies that touch these shadows take a little bit of damage. When you initially cast this skill, its starting animation is an iframe. 90 second cooldown. The third and final buff at fourth job, Boundless Rage, lets you use fury skills without any cost for a little bit of time, although it costs 100 fury to initially use it. 2 minute cooldown. Binding Darkness is your class bind, very simply binding all nearby enemies for 10 seconds, and passively giving IED. 2 minute cooldown. Lastly, all the attacks. Demon Cry attacks around you, damaging enemies and placing a blind debuff on them that lasts for a minute and reduces their defense, attack, and accuracy, as well as increasing your XP and item drop rate on set affected enemies. 14 second cooldown, getting halved down to 7 seconds during Boundless Rage. 
Infernal Concussion is your main mobbing skill, making a bunch of dark orbs raise up and then explode around you. The explosion always crits, and the rising orbs do more damage against normal enemies. Lastly, Demon Impact is your main bossing skill. It hits up to 4 enemies, and has a 100% crit rate chance, as well as extra IED and boss damage, and debuffs enemies with a slow. So both your main bossing and main mobbing skill will always crit, with the exception being the first half of Infernal Concussion, with the orbs rising up. Hyper skills beef up Demon Slayer in a really good way. Cerberus Chomp bites down on nearby enemies, does extra damage to bosses as well as increased IED, and most importantly, restores 50 fury with every use. Seeing as this skill only has a 5 second cooldown, this is a great way to keep replenishing fury. Demonic Fortitude is your epic adventure equivalent for demons, 10% damage for you and all other demons, resistance, and xenons in your party, 1 minute uptime, 2 minute cooldown. Your third and final hyper skill, Blue Blood, is a toggle that doubles almost all your attack lines. The skill itself says 90% final damage of all attacks, but it doesn't up the damage of your lines. It doubles them. I don't know why it specifically does or says this. This is a really important toggle, and there's almost zero reasons to ever turn it off. Hyper Passives give some nice upgrades too. First off, out of all the Demon Lash ones, the only one you'll be wanting is Reinforce. The reason is mainly for a 5th job skill that upgrades Demon Lash though. Fury is unnecessary because Cerberus Chomp already sustains your fury way stronger and faster, and spread you don't want because you're not going to really be mobbing with Lash regularly. Moving on, for all the Dark Metamorphosis ones, you have two main choices. Reinforce, the more popular choice, ups the damage of the orbs circling you, or Enhance, which is nice for certain bosses that cast damage reflect or weapon cancel, but for only 20% of the duration. Reduced Fury is just kinda there, not too useful since it only costs 40 Fury to cast on anyways, and that's every 3 minutes. Lastly though, get everything for Demon Impact. It's your main bossing skill, and they're all good. Reinforce for extra damage, extra strike for another line of damage, two with blue blood toggled on, and reduced fury halves the cost so you can keep spamming it more. Have you ever thought to yourself, I wish all my skills in a job rank each had 100% crit chance and extra AED? Then gosh do I have the fifth job for you. Strap in. Demon Awakening is a buff that gives you a bunch more crit rate while it's active, pops Cerberus Chomp with your attacks once every 8 seconds, and makes your Demon Thrash insanely better. More IED, boss damage, and stronger hits with every consecutive attack. While attacking with Demon Lash, you can now also teleport around with Chaos Lock mid-attack. It lasts for 30 seconds at level 1, going up to 65 seconds at max level. 2 minute cooldown. Spirit of Rage conjures up a big purple demon snake that damages everything it touches for a few seconds. 10 seconds at level 1, going up to 16 seconds at max level. It always crits, and also has 50% IED built into it. When it disappears, it does one final big hit. That's it. It just damages things. 2 minute and 15 second cooldown at level 1, going down to 2 minutes at max level. Orthrus is a little more in-depth, summoning two malevolent twin gods of pure rage tier aid dealing damage when you attack. Both have their own names, Nemia and Garion, sorry if I butchered that, and each one attacks separately, Nemia every 2 seconds, and Garion every 3 seconds. They also give IED and always crit, as well as absorb fury per attack. 40 second duration going up to 55 seconds at max level, 2 minute cooldown. Demon Bane is a hold down damaging skill that's also a 6 second iframe. It can be held up to 3 seconds, and does a bunch of damage while being held, and at the very end with a big final attack. And yes, just like all other 5th job skills Demon Slayer gets, this one also gets extra crit rate and IED. If you just wanted the iframe part of this skill, you could just tap it and be safe for 6 seconds, though you probably won't need to since you have 2 other iframes to use. 2 minute cooldown. On to shared demon nodes. Be warned though, past here you don't get crit or IED with everything. I'm sorry. Defender of the Demon summons Mastema to help fight alongside you, scratching up nearby enemies when you attack, and sometimes debuffing enemies. 2 minute cooldown. Otherworld Goddess's Blessing builds up 1 charge every 2 minutes, up to 2 charges, lasts for 40 seconds, and gives some final damage as well as a ton of other various buffs randomly throughout the duration. These buffs are Blessing of Recovery, which restores your fury and health, and even heals through debuffs that prevent healing. Aegis Blessing, which gives you a shield that reduces damage taken one time per blessing use. Blessing of Fortitude, which ignores one debilitating status effect. And Otherworldly Void, which damages enemies around you in a little explosion. 
For your shared warrior nodes, first, impenetrable skin is a buff that increases damage when you're hit, up to 3 stacks, and gives you super stance, as well as some status resistance, 2 minute cooldown. Lastly, Weapon Aura builds up to 2 charges, 1 every 3 minutes, and popping 1 charge fires off a wave of energy with most of your attacks, with a 5 second cooldown in between said waves. Demon Slayer isn't all that complicated, so here's how to make them easy. Ever notice how some of your skills have these little colored borders and ribbons on them? These are indicators displaying how much Demon Fury each skill costs. Yellow is between 1 and 30 Fury, blue between 31 and 59, light purple between 60 and 90, and dark purple, almost black, being 91 or higher. Though there aren't any light purple skills, all these color ranges also apply to your Demon Fury bar underneath your health, which does in fact have light purple. If you can get into the habit of remembering how much fury you have, seeing these colors at a glance can help out during boss fights. Speaking of fury, putting hyperstat points into fury helps with easing some of Demon Slayer's gameplay if you find yourself running out of fury often and can't get used to quickly sustaining your fury with Cerberus Chomp quite yet. Next, glide techniques. If you don't like using the glide for whatever reason, you could ignore this bit, but the glide is extremely useful for bossing. The first super easy and nice one is simply up jumping and gliding down in place to avoid the floor for a bit of time, like in part 2 of Lotus to avoid his ground shock. Since the glide is momentum based and maintains whatever speed you started the glide at until you click a horizontal direction, you could also do things like flash jump into glide, which makes you glide really fast. Or walk and click jump twice for a slow glide, which can be useful for more precise positioning in bosses. You can even do this backwards. Same with walking and then up jumping into glide. Lastly, walking forward and just keep tapping jump repeatedly to do this little shorter flash jump called bunny hopping. For bossing, you'll mainly want to be spamming demon impact whenever you're not doing a full burst with all your 5th job skills and whatnot, as well as making sure you maintain that demon cry debuff, both for the debuff's reduced enemy damage, defense, and accuracy, but also because it procs insult to injury. Insult to injury is extremely useful and important, and that's just 15% free final damage while a boss is debuffed. Demon Impact procs Insult to Injury too, but Demon Cry's debuff is far better because it lasts for a full minute compared to Impact's 3 seconds and can be recast every 14 seconds or so. Here's some Chaos Lock boss tech for you, courtesy of the Demon Slayer Discord. If you face a boss and use it, you'll teleport directly in front of them, just closing the gap between both of you. If you turn away from the boss and then use Chaos Lock, you'll teleport behind them, unsheathing your Macer Axe, nothing personnel kid, and all that fun stuff. This has some use, like when avoiding certain one-shots in bosses, like Lotus's lasers or Crimson Queen's flame breath. Chaos Lock also has some uses in huge boss arenas. It's a very large range, but not infinite. It has its limits. For grinding, you have two main options. The first would just be what most other classes do, and simply just jump around the map using your main mobbing skill, along with any placedown summons, like Will Skill or Urda Fountain if you have those on node slots, and cycling around your 5th job skills every so often, like Orthrus, Spirit of Rage, or Demon Awakening. The other option is called TP farming. This is an important enough part of Demon Slayer that deserves to be addressed and highlighted for its own section. Short for teleport farming, this is the act of setting up your keyboard in a specific way, and holding down one button to spam both Chaos Lock and Infernal Concussion after every teleport. This is how it's done. Set up your Windows keyboard to Spanish language, within its language settings. In your Maple Keybinds, put Infernal Concussion on Alt and Chaos Lock on Control. Make sure you have your attack speed capped out at 10 by popping Decent Speed Infusion and a Monster Park Green Potion. Hold the Alt key on the right hand side of your keyboard. Be warned, this is a very risky way of grinding, especially if you aren't present at your computer at all times, as with all other lazy AFK methods of grinding, like bite farming for Nightwalkers. This method of farming can also be replicated with a bit more effort through pressing the buttons manually like I'm doing here. I promise that's what I'm doing next on, that's why I made my buttons visible down there. I don't even want to risk it just as a demonstration. You'll also want to make sure as you're doing this that Infernal Concussion is cast twice and you're two-shotting with it, as you don't generate fury with one-shotting with Concussion. This is because every time you use Chaos Lock, you're prevented from gaining any fury for 0.7 seconds, so you need that extra attack to gain your fury back. There's a lot of issues with this method, such as latency, or certain inner abilities, having too much damage, memory leaks from your keyboard repeat delay being at the wrong rate, or even using it at too low a level now apparently. 
Demon Slayer Discord says it's fine 250 and above. But if you can work around them, it is technically an option for grinding. So if you were ever curious what TP farming is or how to do it, now you know. Demons can use two different weapons, one-handed axe and one-handed mace. The difference between both at all levels, nothing. They gain no different stats at any point for the same level tier of each at all levels, nor any passives throughout any of their job ranks to incentivize using one over the other. They both have the same attack speed, attack and attack modifiers, everything. It is quite literally just whichever weapon you prefer the look of more. That's it. When it comes to what secondary to get and use, Demon Slayer and Avenger are similar since they both use the same secondary type, the Demon Aegis. The best in slot Aegis you're able to get and eventually will want is Rune Force Shield, which drops from Damien at all difficulties, even normal. The upside of it is it gives 10% final damage, but the downside is you take 25% more damage from everything. It's still worth it overall just for that extra damage, if you can get one. It's a very low drop rate chance, I've only ever seen it drop 2 or 3 times myself. Until you get incredibly lucky and can get one for yourself, the next best option for a secondary would be Princess Noza Cursed Shield from the secondary selector squares that drop from Princess No. Do be careful when selecting this though, as one has dex on it, and one has more health and no dex specifically for Demon Avenger. You want the dex one for that little extra bit of damage. Your only other options for shields would be the Evolving Force Shield, or the basic Force Shield of Extremes. Neither of these are ideal because Evolving gives 2 extra attack, but 63 less fury than Princess knows, and the basic Force Shield is the same but without the 2 attack. Link skills are very similar to all other classes, almost the same. For grinding, Mercedes, Evan and Aran for XP, Lara for extra normal enemy damage if so desired, and fill in the gaps with whatever else you like, like Ilium Link if you move around a lot, Kinesis for more crit damage, and such. A spread of links looking similar to this might be good. For bossing, it's slightly different from every other class because now you're the class that has the boss damage link built into them. You'll still want the same as everyone else though, as much damage links as you can stuff in here. Lin for slightly more boss damage, Luminous for IED, Kana and Demon Avenger for more damage, a B link, etc. Looking something like this, and as always, recommending Resistance Link if you keep dying in bosses, and want a grace period when you respawn of about 8 seconds. Thankfully you can skip out on crit rate links, because Demon Slayer inherently gets so much free crit built into their skills, even their main mobbing and bossing skills. That being said, for inner ability, yeah you don't want crit rate. What you do want for your first line however, would be boss damage. For the second or third line, abnormal status damage is really good too, and the Demon Slayer Discord even recommends it as mandatory. For the final line you have a few options. Cooldown skip for a chance to skip a bunch of cooldowns, but most importantly including your iframes and a B-Link, buff duration for extra duration on a B-Link and Boundless Rage, or the typical settles of Meso and Drop. Since we have presets for Link skills now, you could just set up one IA slot to be purely for grinding, with both Meso and Drop on it too. Demon Slayer is another one of those classes with way too many Tri-Nodes, 15 to be exact, and they only use about a third of those. No specific perfect Tri-Node though, beyond whichever skills you prefer to use more from this selection. Demon Lash, Infernal Concussion, Demon Impact, Cerberus Chomp, Demon Cry, and Dark Metamorphosis. You should keep Infernal Concussion for grinding and Demon Impact for bossing, obviously, but everything else is good in general for everything you do. Cerberus Chomp for Fury Replenishing, Dark Metamorphosis for extra damage around you, Demon Lash for when Demon Awakening is active, and Demon Cry for its debuff and the fact that it procs insult to injury. Again, the priority of which to get depends on what you use and enjoy more, or if you wanted to focus more on grinding, or just keep Demon Slayer around as one of your boss mules. For Burst slash BA, make sure Blue Blood and all your other longer buffs like Maple Warrior and Dark Metamorphosis are up and ready to go. Then pop your buffs with cooldowns such as Weapon Aura, Boundless Rage, Demonic Fortitude, Defender of the Demon, Demon Awakening, and Impenetrable Skin. After that, pop Orthrus and Otherworld Goddess's Blessing, cast Demon Cry, Spirit of Rage, a B Link, and then attack with two full Demon Lash cycles, consisting of four attacks each. After that, hold down Demon Bane for the full duration of three seconds, 
keep using Demon Lash until Demon Awakening ends, use Demon Cry again to maintain the debuff, and then keep spamming Demon Impact, occasionally Cerberus Chomp if you needed more Fury. Shorten down, Blue Blood Toggle, Buffs, Weapon Aura, Boundless Rage, Demonic Fortitude, Defender of the Demon, Demon Awakening, Impenetrable Skin, Orthrus, Otherworld Goddess's Blessing, Demon Cry, Spirit of Rage, AB Link, Twofold Demon Lash Attack Cycles, Hold Demon Bane, Demon Lash Until Demon Awakening Ends, Demon Cry, Spam Demon Impact, and Cerberus Chomp if you need more Fury. Demon Slayer's Burst is fairly simple, mostly just requiring you to maintain Demon Cry's debuff, pop all your 5th job attacks, and then spam Lash until it goes away, where you then swap to Impact. Simple as that. Over the years, Demon Slayer's playstyle and skills haven't changed much at all, which I always appreciate in classes that stand the test of time. Hopefully they stay that way, if Nexon ever decides to do a big rework on them for whatever reason. Honestly, I don't think they will go near Demon Slayer anytime soon. Their playstyle is very straightforward and simple to understand and utilize. Thanks to the Demon Slayer Discord for not only explaining a lot of this class's special quirks in a neat organized section with loopback navigation and everything, I love that, but also for going over all the important Demon Slayer skills per job rank and explaining why they're important. I love class servers that do this. If there's another class you want me to make a guide on, suggest it to me in the comments. If you don't care what class I cover next, and just like hearing me talk about various Maple Story topics, mainly focused around every class in the game, consider subscribing to the channel. As of this video's release, I've now done three whole Resistance class guides in a row. Will another be next? Will you be the deciding factor that influences my decisions? Guess we'll all find out in the next video. That's all.